Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Grandmaster Luke van Wely from the Netherlands and today I am going to do for you, uh, for Chess24, the game of the day in round 9 of the candidates. For me the most exciting game today was between Anish Giri and Fabiano Caruana. They played a great fighting game, both players tried to win the game and it was a crazy game and I will go with you through this game. So, Anish played d4 and Fabiano decided it was to play the Grunfeld Indian defense. But um, Anish decided to go for some very sharp line of the a very popular line these days is the F3 line of the to play against the Grunfeld Indian. <clears throat> the point is simply that if well basically black plays like um, Fabiano did in the game <coughs> d5 takes takes knight, <coughs> knight to e4 black doesn't have option to take knight takes c3 which is actually quite a standard way to play in the Grunfeld so basically after this move f3 uh, black has two options to play d5 or to play bishop g7 which I also kind of like e4 and then to transpose to the king's indian samish i myself uh, used to play a lot of king's indian and i didn't mind to play against samish however fabiano he was ready for the the setup after um d5 cd5 knight takes d5 e4 knight b6 and basically this is kind of the starting point. So basically, black now is trying to get some counterplay against the center. And um, actually, there are two ways to to play against the center. Is well, many games have been played with something like knight to c6, queen d6, rook d8. Uh, a bit of a strange uh, way to get uh, counterplay against d4 and Fabiano he had some idea maybe not completely correct but um, but very interesting so he pl he plays his move e5 so basically taking on e5 well then you just give up the center and the bishop will be Active. So d5 was called for, it has been played still many times, c6 and Anish he was today in a very aggressive mood, well of course also probably very well prepared and he decided to go for the attack with this move h4, has been played but uh, also between Vichy Anand and Boris Kelfond in their World Championship match, for example. But it's uh, it's going to be very, very sharp, especially so after taking taking this pawn on d5 is either a target or very strong. So there's nothing, something in between. And here Fabiano he chose another very common way to develop his pieces and he decided to play this move knight a6 where most players here they play knight d7 h5 and then to play knight f6 at least defending uh, h7 attacking d5 and also let's say okay after take here take back and normally white is casting queenside at some point 
black will play e4, opening up the long diagonal and trying to play against the king on c1. It it's, uh, has been played many times, interesting way of play. Um, I don't know really what is the current uh, theoretical uh, standing in that line, but uh, believe me, it's one of the hot topical position so I, I'm sure that Anish knew what was going on here and probably Fabiano was not really very keen of checking him there and he came with a fairly new idea interesting so he plays knight to a6 so Fabi Anish plays the most logical move h5, knight b4, and now he took on g6. So one of the ideas is if you make a move like for example like bishop to c5, attacking the knight on b4 and the rook on, on f8, then Black simply takes on d5. Let's say bishop takes f8. Let's say bishop takes f8. And now black has very nice positional composition on the dark squares. Important is of course that you don't lose a piece um, on the d file. So let's say if you make a move like rook d1, you still have bishop e6. And left, for example, hg6, hg6. Well, there's no real attack on the king's side here. Nothing to be afraid of. And you see that, well, it's hard for white to to develop. And actually, I would rather take black here. Of course, uh, Anish, he knows how to play chess. He understands that this is very risky. And so he makes the most logical move h takes g6 and now Fabiano showed his true intentions um, because basically if you make a move like h takes g6 now this is really dangerous why can play two very strong moves at his disposal uh, g4 we have the idea to get the queen to h2 and then play for mate. Or an, another option is simply just to play bishop h6 and try to change the bishop and go queen h6. This is maybe a little bit more complicated but it also it looks very scary after <coughs> takes takes rook d1. So of course <coughs> the idea of uh, knight b4 cannot be just that after hg6 you go hg bishop h4 or g4 or well fg is also bad because now you have the, this additional problem if once you take the pawn on d5 the, the bishop might arrive at some point on c4 and you're going to be pinned so here fabiano made this move bishop f5 very nice move but sacrificing two pawns but after pawn takes h7 king h8 he's two pawns down However, his king is very safe because the black pawn, the white pawn now on h7 is kind of protecting the black king on h8. And now he's, he's, white has to worry about his, his own king safety. And of course, black is threatening to play knight to c2, check to the king and attacking the rook. So that's why, well, the move to 
play was kind of more or less forced because also the five pawn is hanging. It's not a pawn that you like to give up that easily. So rook d1, knight c2 check, king f2, and he took this bishop. So now it's kind of first critical moment in the game because black wants to play against this king on f2 and in order to do that you have to open up the position. So at some point you need to play a move like e5, e4 to open up the bishop and especially because white is very vulnerable on the dark squares. So maybe he could have waited a little bit first to make a move like rook to c8. But uh, Fabiano, he played very quickly. But as I understood in the post-mortem, in their press conference, he was kind of bluffing a bit. He was playing quickly, but he knew that this line is maybe not entirely correct, but he felt like he was going to have a lot of practical chances. So he decided to play straightforward, but I don't think that was really uh, was going to serve him well, because Anis, he managed to defend himself actually quite easily. So bishop d7, which, okay, normally I would rather prefer to put the bishop maybe on g6, but okay, he went bishop d7. Anish develops his knight to h3, and now um, f5 came, and now some bad things are maybe threatening, but he needs to, to block Black's aggression here. So that's why he played this move f4, stopping uh, any expansion there. Also, the bishop on d7 now not doing that much. He's uh, looking at the pawn on f5 being blocked by this pawn on f5. And of course, um, now for example, if you want to open up, which is let's say the most natural way of playing, then this knight jumps in and always a threat of potential mating threat on g6. So this was not really the idea of um, of uh, Fabiano, so he made this move rook c8. Now, for example, if you naively would take the pawn on e5, just like that, then black will sacrifice another pawn, playing f4. Let's say you take this pawn and then Queen comes in, attacking the knight, so you have to defend, and bishop takes e5. Well, you are three pawns up, but now all black pieces are extremely active. So this is maybe not something to... I can really uh, suggest why to play like this. But Anish made a very good solid move. He he sol solidified his structure and he played g3. Now the problem is of course that once black plays a move like e4 here, then the position becomes static. Okay, the bishop on g7 is quite good. On the other hand, white has now g5 for his knight at his disposal, which is actually kind of annoying because of f7 uh, square has to be covered all the time, otherwise it will be made. 
So Fabiano maybe he had to play e4 anyway or any other move but the move he made actually not the best and it should have finished badly for him taking take and take on e5 so now White is three pawns up and is threatening. He has the center and he's threatening knight to f4 and knight to g6. So, well, so black has to do something really quickly here to. So, black played here f4. Just anything, just try to get some play against the king. So knight takes f4, threatening mate on g, not threatening mate because you're still pinned, but well, there's something to consider. So queen g5. So now white has a few options and I don't know exactly how much time Ani spent here but this was like the crucial moment in the game because he decided to give up this e5 pawn to, ch to change some pieces however it was not necessary first move to consider is of course e6 however then black will sacrifice on f4 takes let's imagine for example king e1 and then rook to f1 all very complicated stuff because now the queen is hanging so if you play a move like for example king e2 it will be here and take there and well probably it will be a draw but um, so e6 was not but since this is a problem the the pin over the f file actually the i don't know if it's if it's a very difficult move but King e1, I think, would have been the killer move. So black has to do something now very, very quickly. And uh, for example, a move like bishop takes e5 doesn't work because of knight g6 check takes and queen takes e5 check. Another option is to play a move like rook f5 with the idea of course to get the pawn like this but white has this simple move rook to h5 and for example if you play like takes takes rook takes e5 well i mean you're going to be a few pawns down in the end game so i move the king takes takes and it's hopeless. You're at least two pawns down. And um, I don't see any particular reason. Well, I don't think it's it's so difficult to find this, but okay. Anish, he, well, the move he played was not bad, but it was not the killer move, which is actually very important to just to finish off your opponent. Uh, some, So he made this move, rook d4, which leaves black in the game. Queen b4, otherwise black can take on f4, but that now the rook on f8 is hanging.
So rook f7, knight e2, and for now, okay, white is three pawns up and very solid, but black is still quite active and let's say this pawn on h7 will drop at some point, which is not enough for black to save the game, but if he can reach an endgame with one pawn down with the bishops, then he has very good chances to save himself. So he played here bishop g4, queen to e4, yes and there's still not so much that what uh, what black can do, he simply has to stay put. So queen to f6, rook to h4, and he has to keep the bishops and just to see how white is going to proceed. Queen e3 attacking a7 pawn and b6. Now he's maybe threatening to take the pawn on b2, so b3. So, so far so good. Rook to e7, queen d2, maybe not the most active move, but you have also, I think, naturally speaking, the move rook h5 is more to the point, because basically you put a lot of pressure on the fifth rank. It means also that if you, if black, let's say, takes this this pawn, if black takes this pawn like this, then at least, okay, now white has also play against the black king, which is, uh, and you have two pawns up, and now the only the question, which king is safer, but, uh, well, I mean, this knight on, knights on, knight on f4 and the rook on h5, they also working towards that king. So it would have forced the issue a bit. And he had another idea. He played queen d2. Maybe now black should have played here the move rook to g7. But okay, it's also not, this is maybe a problem with this move, knight to h5. Anyway, he can take this pawn on h7, then he's going to be endgame two pawns down. And of course you like to, to, to postpone this possibility of taking this pawn on h7. So that's why he went rook to c7. And now Anish, he came up with a very uh, remarkable decision. It's not something which I would have done quickly myself, but he was trying to now to force the issue, which is is fine if it if it wins immediately. And he decided to to give his pawn. What was his idea after bishop takes d6, queen d5. Now he got this square d5 to go to, to put his queen, to activate his queen. And now it, this looks very scary for black. So, but I'm not, uh, I, the, it's probably a dubious way to, to continue the game. So, yeah, after queen d5, 
Fabiano went rook f7, king g2, and bishop c5. And in effect, okay, now it's getting a bit tactical. But in fact, if you say A, you also have to say B. It means that, uh, for example, there's this move B4 here. And the idea is that if you take this pawn, then this knight joins the party. Very unpleasant. And somehow this bishop has almost no good squares to go to. Basically, white still wants black to take on h7. That's why it's good to put pressure on the bishop on f5. Anish didn't do that. He went for another move. Rook to h5 here. And now this is actually also a very critical moment, but okay. Players didn't have that much time. So, and he went for a move which, not a bad move, exchanging some pieces, but also not. The best would have been to play here a move like rook g5. To give you an example, if you play bishop takes e2. The idea is to play queen here. Rook f8. Rook g8 check. You have to take here. Takes. Let's say bishop takes. And to play this kind of end game. Quite a good end game, but what else? There was also an another option if black plays here, bishop to f8. But there's one little problem. This is knight g6 check. I mean, you, you can, yeah, you can never take on e2 anyway. I mean, if you take here on e2. There's always this queen f1 and rook f2 and mate is coming. But here, if you if you play this move bishop f8, it's a very important um, detail that after knight g6 takes, knight takes, rook takes f8 and queen e4 check and next move will be mate on h4. So this was an interesting moment for Anish to make some favorable exchanges. He went for this one. Takes, takes. It's still, it's complicated, but uh, it's going to be now a pawn down only after being four pawns down for Fabiano. And well, there's a threat knight uh, queen g8 mate, so bishop e6. It's just Fabiano is hanging on just by by a miracle, but he's hanging on. Takes and check check go to g5 with tempo. We Re well repeating some moves and knight to f4. Still. Black is in trouble, but compared to how it used to be, it's uh, already not so bad anymore. Queen e5, good move. Central centralization of the queen. Yes, and now, okay, I was discussing this position with Gustafsson during the live commentary. And to us, it seemed most promising just to start running with the g-pawn. And why? Because you simply want to put pressure on this bishop on f7. Anish chose a strange plan, which I 
I disagree with that. He was bringing his king. Well, he's basically putting his king out of the pin. So this was kind of understandable, but black couldn't do much anything with the king in the pin. So there was no really need to move out of the pin. Not a bad move, but okay, we thought maybe g4 was, and g5 was better, more straightforward. So basically Fabiano doesn't mind to change queens because basically white is attacking and once the queens are off, trying to change some more pawns and we know the end game, for example, two knights against the, against the bear king is a draw. So even when the, when the queens are off, you have good chances to to draw. And of course the queen on e5 has such a dominant position, so you, you, you need to challenge that. So he was giving some check, some moving around. He came with the king here. Knight c7, a bit obscure move, I have to admit. And he went back. And I believe that now maybe well, Fabiano could have gone back to e3. And I think he should have. But he made this move a5. And now Ani said, I think this is actually the last real moment that he could still get a very nice setup for his pieces. Uh, because later in the game, he had real problems to coordinate. So he could play still queen c8 check, king g7 and knight to e3. And the, the knight will come to f5. So for example, if you make a move like king h7, let's say I make a move like knight f5, queen here, and then I put, let's say, queen to b or d7. And it's kind of quite unpleasant. If you take, I just take with the king and the king is extremely safe here on f4. And now g pawn is flying in. Another option would have been to, to give the bishop but okay, it's a it's going to be a queen and game pawn up. Maybe can hold it, but it looks bad. So after a five. Yeah, so. Yeah, this would have been a very nice way to. Yeah, I actually, in fact, this happened in the game, but here he should have played knight, uh, knight to f5. Instead, he went queen b7 for some strange reason. King g8, queen to a8. First, I don't see what was the point to, to play like this. And Fabiano just offers a change of queens. And now he is almost out of the out of trouble. He's, st he's still pawned down, but here and you see now black is coming through the backside to harass the king here. So basically, king g5, queen g8 doesn't bring you anything. So he had to make this ugly move. Of course, now the bishop is hanging 
and also there's this additional knight h6 threat so this was kind of forced but okay now the black king is relatively safe and uh, material was getting a change which was in fact a big help for black so he was giving some checks and now queen c2 and now it's almost a draw this knight is pinned and this pawn is under pressure if this pawn falls b3 pawns also falls so basically and he still found a way sort of to play on because Fabiano made a little mistake so just moving around a little bit yeah just going back and forth so yeah basically here he could just play this move bishop h5 forcing white to play queen b5 and then simply to go back and nothing would happen there I mean the point is that if you go here okay probably just go back anyway and basically white cannot do anything so here he made this move queen d2 which and then Anish had a little chance suddenly not a big one but uh, so now of course you cannot play a move like king g7 because then he will be very happy to exchange queens drawing chance is still alive but this is not the kind of thing that you want to do so king e7 check here and he managed sort of to get out of this Bishop takes b3, queen, some queen checks, taking the pawn. I believe that now bishop d1 is also good enough to make a draw, let's say queen e3 here. And next move, for example, to take the knight. And okay, you're going to be a pawn up in this queen endgame, but extremely hard to convert, if not impossible. But Fabiano, he had a different way of playing queen a2. And his plan is actually very simple. He simply is preparing this move bishop c4. So if you take this simply the pawn on a, a5, I will play bishop c4. You give some checks. And even if you have a, you can defend this with tempo, the next move will be bishop takes e2 and queen takes a3. You reach it queen end game with one extra pawn it will be easily easily drawn so he was giving some checks he was pushing the pawn some playing around a little bit but okay g5 and finally they get to business here and well basically bishop c4 is coming and Anis decided to repeat the moves this was incredible defense <coughs> by Fabiano Caruana I know him as a very resilient player very tough player however I think he gambled a little bit too much it should have finished badly for him and 
Anish needed just to calculate a bit better at the final, at the crucial moment, but maybe he missed something there, I don't know. But anyway, this was game of the day. It was a very interesting game between two hot shots and I hope you enjoy it.